Welcome back friends. In this video, we're going to create the scoring system and the UI to display that score. In the end, it's going to look like this. I have a label that keeps track of the score and whenever I kill an enemy, the label is updated. Let's get started. Okay, so before we create the scoring system, I want to clamp the player's movement. Currently, if I want to, I can just leave the game area and that shouldn't be allowed. So let's go into the player script. And in here, we want to write some code inside of the physics process. So after we call movement slide, let's make sure that the global position of the player isn't outside of the game area. So we know that the game area in the game scene here starts from zero, zero, and it ends at the window size, basically. Because we don't have a camera here and the game's left edge is at zero, zero, we know that the right edge on the x-axis is 540, and on the y-axis, it is going to be, what did we set it to? 960. So this bottom right edge here is 540 to 960, and the top left edge is at 00. zero. So we want to make sure that the player's global position is inside of this rectangle here. Okay, so inside of the script, we are going to use the, let's say global position equals, so global position is a vector2. And a vector2 has a built-in function called clamp. You can call it by simply doing dot clamp on any vector2, and this will take in two values. The first one is the minimum value. In this case, it is going to be vector2.0. So this is simply a vector2 that has 0 in x and 0 in y. And the next argument is going to be the maximum value. And this one is going to be the, we're going to call get viewport rect dot size. And this will return a vector2 that is the size of the window, the viewport rect essentially. In our case, that is going to be a vector2 with the x value of 540 and y value of 960. So this clamp will return a vector2 that is above 0, 0 and below the screen size. And this will make sure that we stay inside of the game area. So let's run the game and see what this looks like. So I'm trying to go out right, it doesn't work. Can I go down? It doesn't work. Can I go left? Make sure I don't get killed. It doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work, but like half the player can go out. I think that's fine. I don't want the player to stop like here. I don't think that looks natural. That feels natural. Oops, we died. Okay. Let's try the up as well. Hopefully before... Oh, I died again, but I did try to go out for a split second there and it didn't work. So uh, don't worry, this works. Okay, now we can move on and create the scoring system. So. That is going to be inside of the game script. We're gonna create a new variable here called score. This is going to be an integer and we're gonna set this to be zero by default. We want to increase the score each time the player kills an enemy. But currently we don't know when an enemy gets shot, inside of the game script at least. Inside of the laser script, we know that the enemy is killed in this function. And we know that the enemies take damage function is called here. So actually it isn't in this function. It's in this function here that we call die. We basically need to let the game script know when the hit points of the enemy goes below zero. To do that, we're going to create a signal here called killed. And we're going to emit this signal inside of the Let's see, we could do it inside of the die function here, or we can do it inside of take damage. Let's do it here. So before we call die, we're gonna say killed.emit. Now we can go back to the game script and inside of the timeout signal callback here, before we add the enemy as a child, we can connect the killed signal of the enemy to a function called on enemy killed. Let's create this function. Okay. Now we have access to the exact point in time when enemy is killed. So in here, we simply want to 
add to the score. I'm gonna add 100 to the score each time an enemy is killed. Feel free to use a different value here. It is completely arbitrary at this point. And then we can print the score for now just to see that this is working. So I'm gonna start the game and shoot some enemies. And as you can see, each time I kill an enemy, our score is increased by 100. One cool thing we could do is inside of the enemy, we could create an export variable here called score, for example, or points, let's say, and let's set this to be 100. So for the default enemy, the points are 100, but for the diver enemy, we could do this. We could give it a higher value like 200. And when we emit the signal killed, we can actually send these points And from the game script, we can also receive them here. And instead of adding 100, we can just add points. Now, when we kill the diver enemy, let's see, we should get 200 points. And if we kill a normal enemy, we get 100. As you can see, it is working, great. So that is the scoring system in a nutshell. Now we just need to create the UI to display it to the player. Okay, to do that, we're gonna create some new nodes and a new scene here. So inside of the game scene, let's create a canvas layer. Because we want the UI to be on a different layer, if a different drawing layer, I'm gonna call this the UI layer. And I'm gonna put this at the top. It doesn't really matter because if you take a look at the layer here, it is at layer one. By default, everything in Godot is displayed at layer zero. So because the UI layer is at layer one, everything that is a child of the UI layer will be displayed above everything else. And in here, we're gonna create the HUD. So let's create a new node here. And this is going to be a control. Let's rename this to be the HUD. And I'm gonna turn this into a scene. Right click, save branch as scene and we're gonna save this inside of the scenes folder. Let's go to the scene. So this is going to be our HUD. I'm gonna make this full rect. And in here, we're not gonna have much. We're only gonna have a label here. So let's create a label node. This will display the score. So I'm gonna rename it to be the score. I want this to be the top wide anchor preset here. And in here, we're gonna give some text. Let's also set the alignment to be in the center. And I'm gonna say score is 9999. I'm gonna create some label settings as well here so that we can change the font size. Let's make it bigger, like 64 maybe, uh, maybe 48. We can also use a different font. I have one here inside of my assets. I'm gonna use this one. That looks nice. And now we want to create a script here for the HUD. So let's do that as well. Make sure to put it inside of the scripts folder. And in here, we want to create a reference to the score label. And I'm gonna create a set function here. And whenever someone tries to set this score variable here, I'm gonna change the text property of the label instead of changing the label. I'm gonna say score.text equals score plus the string version of the value. So instead of setting the variable, whenever someone tries to set this variable, we're gonna change the text property of the label and you'll see why this will be you know, easy to use for us. Okay, now we can go back to the game script we can create a reference here to the HUD. And now we can use the HUD's score property whenever we want to change the label's text. So in the ready, I could say HUD.score equals zero. And if I run the game, this would set the score to be zero. I'm gonna do a similar thing here inside of the game script as well. I'm gonna create a setter for the score. And whenever someone tries to set the score variable, we first will use the value that was passed to set the score. 
and then we're gonna set the HUD score variable to this score as well. With this setup, we don't even need to call, you know, set the HUD score va variable anymore. We can just set our score and it will automatically set the HUD as well. Now I can say at the start score is zero and whenever the enemy, an enemy is killed, we're adding to the score so this will automatically work now. Let's take a look at this. So at the start score is zero and if I kill an enemy, as you can see, the score label is being updated. And like I said, this is because whenever score is set, we're setting the HUD as well. Okay, so great. This is going to be it for this lecture. You know, feel free to play around with the HUD here. If you didn't like the font size, for example, feel free to experiment there. I'm not going to waste time with that. In this one, we created the scoring system and the UI to display the score. We also did the player's clamp code to make sure the player stays inside of the game area. Thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn more about Godot, if you're a beginner, I have a course where I teach the basics at a much more slower pace. So if that's interesting to you, check the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.